Okay, welcome back to the second part of section 7.1 in our calculus class. Still talking about integration by parts. Really not a lot of new information here. It's nice. We can just practice it a little bit more, but we're going to talk about what do you do if you have definite integral. You don't really have to say much because just find the antiderivative and, and evaluate it like you normally would, but we'll write it down. And then uh, I want to show you that integration by parts derives some useful, uh, just so you know, know about them, where they come from, we'll use them in the future, these so-called reduction formulas, integrals of powers of things. Uh, I'll, I'll try to motivate why you'd want to, why you know about integrals of powers of things, at least for certain, certain kinds of disciplines. <clears throat> okay, let's just get going here. So like I was saying, this is our, our beautiful, I think it's beautiful, integration by parts formula uh, for indefinite integrals. What does it mean? It means that it produces an antiderivative of a given ant of, a, you know, of a function, well, at least in terms of some integral that you have to be able to do, right? So that's our new thing. Well, if you have a definite integral, if you're doing an integration by parts with a definite integral, the right-hand side of this formula really just says like, well, evaluate it as usual. Find the antiderivative, plug in B, then plug in A. The notation here, I'm just writing like, well, for the UV part, you could do that separately if you want. And then when you go to do this second in integral, it's also definite with the same limits of integration. Okay, so pause the video and write them down if you want to. Let's just do some examples. Here's a definite integral. I'm gonna use parts. I'm not gonna use the color scheme in this video. I'm gonna uh, just write them. So I'm gonna take u to be x, dv to be the cosine of pi x, dx. So du is dx. V is, well, it's sine of pi x, but I need a one over pi to make the derivative come out right. Technically, that's a substitution. So what do I do? I write down, okay, well, it's x times, uh, u times v. So that's one over pi x, <clears throat> excuse me, times the sine of pi x. Uh, and, and that's, so that's my u times v, and I'm gonna evaluate that from zero to a half. Don't wanna forget that minus v du, that's minus one over pi, I'm gonna put it out front, the integral of sine of pi x dx. Sorry, parentheses are in the wrong spot there on my pi x. Got them, and that's also an integral from zero to a half. Okay, uh, this first part, not really, I, you can evaluate it. I personally like to do it on the next step, so I'm just gonna keep writing that I have to. Gotta integrate this. So it's gonna be one over pi times one over pi times the antiderivative of sine, which is positive, uh, ne sorry, negative cosine. All right, so it changes my minus to a plus, and then that's from zero to a half. And now I can show you what I mean by that, because now I'm gonna just plug in one half into the whole expression. So I'll do my upper limit, subtract off, parenthesizing it carefully, lower limit into the whole expression. So what do I mean? I'm gonna write one over pi times one half times the sine of pi over two, that's plugging in there, plus one over pi squared cosine of the same. So that's my upper limit plugged in, and then I'm gonna subtract. I hope I have enough room here to plug in my lower limit. Uh, because of this factor right here, plugging in zero kills this term. So I just get zero plus one over pi squared, the cosine of zero, which is one. All right, so now what do we got here? The sine of pi over two is one, so this is one over two pi, plus the cosine of pi over two is zero. And I have to subtract one over pi squared, so I'm gonna leave it like that. One over two pi minus one over pi squared. Nice. So you see what I mean? The fact that we did the integration by parts and it was a definite integral, uh, okay, whatever. Uh, I mean, we had to find an antiderivative. Uh, uh, we had it written down kind of strangely in these two pieces because of parts. But at the end of the day, we plugged one half into it, plugged zero into it, took the difference. Let's circle back and think about an old idea about uh, integration. Uh, that gives us a volume. I want to take the region R that's shown there in this picture, bounded by the exponential function between one and three, uh, and form the solid. Uh, uh, let's at least set up an integral. Uh, and it says to use shells. 
maybe we can have a discussion if it doesn't make the video too long of why I think shells would be the best method to do this. But if we're going to use shells, that means that we're going to need to integrate dx. Yeah, our little segment that spins around the y axis uh, and is parallel to it so that it sweeps out a cylindrical shell is dictated, its location, I mean, is dictated by an x value, not a y value. So that's how I know that we're going to have to do this integral dx, shells. <coughs> Cool, so how does the shell formula work? Well, you can stop the video and remind yourself, stop the video and do this problem without me, and then just skip forward and see if, see if you get the same answer as me. So, so the volume of this thing, well, the shell formula's got a two pi built into it, and we're gonna integrate from one to three, right? We're gonna integrate from one to three, and then what do we need to put in here? Uh, uh, the radius, the radius of this thing is just x, radius of this thing is x, and the height of it is, well, the function value in this case, e to the x. So I need to integrate 2 pi times x times e to the x dx, and look, that's perfect for parts. Yeah, x times e to the x. So integration by parts. I don't think I really want to do it. Uh, uh, we've done this one before, and I want the video to be short, so I'm just going to write the antiderivative you can check it. The antiderivative of x e to the x is x e to the x minus e to the x. So I have to evaluate that from one to three. All right. And I'll write it as far as plugging in, but I'm not going to worry about uh, simplifying it or doing it with a calculator. I'm just going to, because I don't have it ready uh, and I don't want the video to slow down while I try to type this thing into a calculator and get a decimal. But that's what I get when I plug in three and then I need to carefully plug in one. Well, plugging in one certainly gives me zero over there. E to this, e to, e, so it's two pi times the quantity three e cubed minus e cubed. Oh, and pardon me, I should have noticed that that's two e cubed. So that's four pi uh, e cubed. It's a nice answer. Good, so you can check out if you get the same. All right, so a little integration by parts reminding you of shells. What about disks? Or washers, I guess. I don't think so. I don't want to make the video too long, but if we were going to use washers, well, then we're using segments that are perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So down here for y less than or equal to, I think, 1, it's okay. It's just uh, uh, constant functions. Then up here, so we'll have to do it with two integrals because the lower curve switches. Uh, uh, from this line segment to uh, this curve, uh, sorry, at, at y equals 1. So we'd have to use two integrals. We'd have to solve this for x, so it involves a logarithm, and then squaring. Yeah, I, I think shells is the way to go, but uh, I guess I would check it out. You know, see if you can write down the washer integral dy uh, and integrate it. You know, show me. Come to my office hour and make an appointment with me and show me. Be, I'd be stoked. Okay, looking for the next example. It was a ways down here. Why do this? Uh, I'm going to make this quick, but we haven't talked about this, these hyperbolic functions. Yeah, so if you don't know them, they, they come in the end of chapter three. I think, oh, I shouldn't say it. I think it's section 3.11. I won't write it in permanent, but you should check them out. They, they behave kind of like the trig functions, except you, you don't have to hassle with their signs. So just as a real quick demo here, I'm going to let u be x. Uh, dv, I'm going to let it be this hyperbolic cosine. The antiderivative of it is hyperbolic sine. You don't have to worry. There's no plus minus business. There's no dx up there. So this thing is x. Cinch, it's pronounced x. That's my uv minus the integral of cinch. Uh, uh, sorry, all that's from zero to one. Uh, uh, the antiderivative of cinch is the hyperbolic cosine, cosh, as they say. So I need to evaluate that all from zero to one. I can just write it once. So plugging in one, I get the cinch of one, calculator work, minus the cosh of one. Take away plugging in zero, I'm going to get zero because of that factor, minus the cosh of zero. 
which is one, but I'm just going to write a uh, cosh of zero. Calculator work. Nice. Okay, so why do that? Just to remind you or encourage you, remind yourself of the hyperbolic trigonometric functions. This one, I think I'm going to skip. I was going to do it, uh, maybe we can just say something about it. The reason I was going to do it is it has kind of an interesting dv. dv is the sine of x cos x dx. So it's interesting in the sense it's a little more complicated because, can you say what v is? Stop the video. I want a function whose derivative is sine x times cosine x, right? So even that is itself a little bit of a substitution problem, isn't it? Because cosine x dx is the derivative of sine. So if this is w, this looks like w prime dw. Yeah. So I'll just tell you, and you can check it out with that substitution, that v here would have to be 1 half sine squared. If it's 1 half sine squared, then its derivative is sine x co x. So that's why I want to do that one. But I'll, I'll, I'll leave the details to you. I know I'm talking fast. I want to talk about reduction formulas, and I don't want this to get uh, uh, too, too long. <clears throat> OK, so what's a reduction formula? I'm going to just kind of illustrate with this, this uh, example. We've already gotten kind of an idea that the complexity, how much computation, I mean, you need to have to do of some integral like this would definitely depend on n. You have to use integration by parts basically for every, you know, if n is three, you have to do it three times. If n is four, you have to do it four times. So let's just kind of try to do the integration by parts once and for all here. I'm gonna let u equal uh, x to the n. So du is n times x to the n minus one dx. I'm going to let dv be the exponential, so v is e to the x, and what does our parts formula tell us? We get uh, u times v is x to the n times e to the x, and then we have to subtract the integral of v du, so that's going to be n x to the n minus 1 e to the x dx, or if I kind of write that all in one line, says that the integral of x to the n times e to the x is equal to x to the n times e to the x minus, I'm going to pull the n through there, the integral of the same thing, but the exponent has been reduced by 1. All right, so that's why it's called a reduction formula, is that in this case, the exponent drops by one. So if you wanted to, uh, uh, if you wanted to keep going, if you had some specific n, you can keep sort of iterating on that thing. Or if you can write a computer program, you can have the computer program iterate it for you to, com to compute the antiderivative. All right. Let me just illustrate uh, um, with one uh, example. Let's say we were going to do something like uh, I think we've done this before, but let's make n equal three. So maybe I want an antiderivative for uh, e to the, so sorry, x cubed times e to the x. So I'm going to use this formula up here when n is equal to 3, right? So what I'm looking at is the right-hand side, and everywhere there's an n, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to write the number 3 and write it out. So the, for, the reduction formula tells me that I should take x cubed times e to the x and subtract 3 times the integral of x squared. All right, one less than x cubed. And now what I'm going to do is inside these brackets, i got to remember to multiply everything in there by 3, but inside those brackets I'm going to use the reduction formula again, but I'm going to use it with n equal to 2. Some of this stuff I have to keep dragging along. I can't, re I can't forget or algebraically change what I've got, but I'm going to use these brackets. So now in the purple brackets, I'm just focusing on the reduction formula when n is 2. So this thing is x squared e to the x minus 2 times the integral of x to the 1 times e to the x dx. All right, and maybe we can sort of multiply through so we can see, see what kind of coefficients we're getting here. Just multiply that negative 3 through there, I mean. So I have negative 3 x squared e to the x and then positive 6 of this integral. And although we've done that integral, I'm going to kind of look at it as, well, we just use the reduction formula again, except this time 
and doing it with n equal to one. All right, so again, uh, uh, this thing's growing. There's a lot of terms that I have to drag along here, but now blue brackets focusing on the reduction formula. Can you still see it up there? It's gonna be x times e to the x minus the integral of one, or one times the integral of x to the zero times e to the x. All right, now we can just kind of push everything through. We have copied the terms that are just coming along for the ride. We've got six x e to the x minus six, the integral of e to the x is e to the x, and then that's finally done, we're done. So there's an example of how to use the reduction formula uh, over and over and over again until you finally get an integral. I didn't highlight it in anything, but I finally got an integral that I could just do because you reduce the power of uh, uh, the exponents until it's gone, until the polynomial part's gone. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this video kind of short. Here's some more reduction formulas. Most, these are all uh, uh, derived by integration by parts. We did this one together. So there it is. Uh, uh, if you wanna take kind of a challenge and try one of these things, I would recommend that you start maybe with this one. Oops, wrong pen. Start with this reduction formula for sine x. It's very doable. Try it out. You do all of them with uh, integration by parts. Where do these things get used? Well, this sine n uh, uh, will come up for us in the next chapter, so the same or the, the next section. Excuse me. Same with tangent. In terms and secant. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, practical use uh, uh, in in uh, in electronics and signal processing, uh, uh, integrals of powers of sine and cosine are used in, in uh, uh, these, these certain things called Fourier transformations, Fourier waves. So, but that's kind of beyond the scope of our course, but there are reasons why people want to be able to compute these things. But for us, they're gonna come up in, in subsequent chapters when we look at some more techniques of integration. Okay, so thanks for listening.